Okay, here we are live. Another one of Sister Kate's uh, gorilla live stream. I uh, can't change my phone that way. I was going to turn it. That angle's a little strange, isn't it? It's not straight. It should be about like that. So give me two seconds here. Uh, no, that's not going to work. I think you do it this way. Uh, is that a little better? That's a little better. There. At least I'm straight. Okay. Um, man. I, I got live. I can't even talk. I don't even know what I'm, I'm... I'm trying to gather my thoughts. I had my thoughts gathered. I know what this talk is about. Shalom. Good afternoon. Long Star Living and Kai Jen. Shalom. Sister Kate. And Hey Suze and Jacob Schilt. I don't know that I've... Jacob, have you been on the live stream before? Welcome. Uh, Kaijin, I am using an e-gen to make sauerkraut right now. Yes, I am. And I've ordered a few more. So I don't know if the names are similar except for the gen at the end. And there's DOC. Do you want to be called DOC or DOC? And Aledwin Mayor, shalom, on time for a change. Well, I, more than one person has told me, like, I never know when you're going to be on. That's, I miss your live streams and I don't want to. I'm sorry. I just kind of wing them. I am not big on scheduling because I've already got enough scheduling going on in my life. Every morning I'm doing four, three or four chores. Uh, we've got a dog right now who's having to take medicine. I've got my chickens I have to let out and make sure they have enough water, food. And then I have two nanny goats I'm milking. Um, and the one, we're trying to wean a baby off of her at the same time, so that's sort of a weird mess. And then the other one has mastitis, which I've been treating now for like a month. Uh, and she's finally clearing up again, but she hates it because I milk her and she gets a shot, and the shots are no fun. And uh, I'm tired of giving shots because they're no fun for the animal, and I've had three of them. Because they get, I use the needles over, I wash them with soapy water, hot soapy water, etc. And the needles get worn and sometimes they don't eject plunge right. And I've had the antibiotic spray back up in my face and it's just a whole deal. It takes me about an hour. And I think every day about how can I streamline this? Like how can I streamline getting water to the chickens? And on one hand, I want to streamline it, but on the other hand, like, I need the physical exercise, so I don't want to streamline it, or I will get what I'm considering, you know, fat and lazy. I'm already fat enough, so it's a whole, it's a whole deal. Um, how are you guys doing? What's going on with you all? No, me, Sister Kate. Hello from Southwest Missouri, David Ellison. Shalom, Sister Kate. Linda Hipple and friends. Linda, yeah, how you doing? Are you the person who sent me the ginger root and the um, Jerusalem artichoke roots? Was it you, Linda? I know you're sending me some kind of chicken, no, not chicken, garden mesh thing. Because um, the ginger didn't come up, but the Jerusalem artichokes are doing great. I'm late for one. I'm the late one usually. Well, who can blame you? If I said every Wednesday at 10, you know, it'd be easier for you all, but I can't guarantee that. I, you know, some mornings I get up at 6 and some mornings I get up at almost 10, depending on what's happened the night before, if we're busy or not. Arthur, Leslie, greetings, Sister Kate, and everyone have a grand plan of not doing anything today. Let's see how that works out for me. West Hold Forge, right? Every time Pastor and I say, oh, we're going to do a zero day or whatever we call it. We're just going to rest. We're not going to do anything strenuous. In the most, you know, mundane way, I'm walking to feed the chickens, and then I see another product project I want to get done, and I'm motivated, and I'm like, oh, yeah, let's get that project done. And, you know, then I wind up, it's noon, and I'm soaked with sweat, and I'm exhausted. So I know how that goes. Um, okay, so let's get into our topic. Uh, Juneteenth, Hanukkah, Cinco de Mayo. And I'm sure there's other holidays we could throw on there, but I, I, I wanted to talk about them because I have never heard of Juneteenth before until uh, Donald Trump set a date to on June the 19th to go to Tulsa, Oklahoma and do a speech. 
and there was all kinds of traffic on the Twitter about, doesn't he know it's Juneteenth? He shouldn't be doing this thing and blah, blah, blah. He's so disrespectful and, and many, you know, many posts like that. Not just one person saying, doesn't he know it's Juneteenth? But lots of people saying, doesn't he know it's Juneteenth? Which tells me they all know what it is, right? And, uh, and so I'm like, well, I should find this thing out. I'm, you know, I'm of the older generation. And so if I don't want to be completely obsolete, I've got to be aware of certain things happening in our culture. So I looked it up and June 19th is the day that I guess the last state in the union in the 1860s, Texas, uh, outlawed slavery. So that made it so that it was a national law then. Because as Pastor Joe said in one of his recent YouTube or Patreon videos, when Lincoln freed the slaves during the Civil War, he did not free the northern slaves. He only freed the southern slaves. And it was a attempt, a move on his part, you know, to win that war. Um, and so the northern states' slaves were not freed until later. And then obviously... You know the western border of the country i don't know where it was in the civil war but I, i'm pretty sure it was texas i don't know if washington um, state was a state in the 1860s uh i'm trying to think of when the louisiana purchase happened too if they if louisiana was a state in the 1860s or if it happened later anyway for whatever reason texas is the last state to outlaw slavery and so june 19th is a historical date in the history of the United States. And we have a, a gazillion historical dates in our country. You know, when the country was founded, when the Constitution was ratified, um, when the, the uh, Revolutionary War was over, when Lewis and Clark explored out to the West, when the Lu Louisiana Purchase was made, and just so on and so on and so on. When Andrew Jackson marched down to Florida or, you no know, Louisiana and defeated the British in 1814 and that whole song and, and the whole thing. So June 19th is a historical date in the history of the United States. But what has happened, and it's, it's I, I don't have an opinion on whether it's right or wrong or not. Uh, it's ju it just is. With a certain historical dates, the, the culture of the people that it's relevant for make it a holiday now holiday what what do you guys think a holiday is what do you you know where does that word holiday come from Wessel Forge that's a new one to me yeah it's a new one to a lot of people because it's not taught in our history books it's a very modern uh very new uh holiday uh but what just think about the word holiday and then think to yourself you know where did that come from Let me see what you guys say about that. Oh, come on. There's 16, 17 of you watching. One of you's got an opinion on holiday. The word holiday. I hate just pontificating. I like a little action from you all. Come on. Holy day. Exactly. A led one mayor. Holy day is where holiday comes from. It's just a shortened version of it. And holy days were... Now, I'm not saying it's only from the Bible, but I will say it's definitely at least from the Bible. Uh, there can be, you know, the Buddhists could say we have holy days and the Islamists can say they have holy days. Um, and the Father, God, has his holy days that he l describes in the Bible, you know, lays them out. And then America and other countries, too, have kind of taken that word holiday, holy day, and then kind of made it into the secular uh, version also, like the 4th of July is a national holiday in America. There is nothing holy about the 4th of July. Holy means set apart. That is what the word holy means. Now, July 4th is set apart, but it's not set apart to Yahweh, where Holy Day's origin comes from. It's set apart is a historical date for America, right? Um, and it is national. And what that means is what? What does national holiday mean, y'all? 19th. Mike, how's holy day? Exactly. 
there should be a difference between holy day and holiday or or some other um well there probably are words and i can't think of them right now four days off that are not religious days off like memorial day memorial day is a different kind of day than even the fourth of july it's a day picked to be a memorial for something it's not the same thing as a holy day for yahweh july 4th i dread because of all the fireworks three weeks before and after <laughs> my dogs hate it they hate the fourth of july because of all the fireworks um I asked you guys a question, though. What question did I ask you? I was waiting for y'all to answer. Not about holiday. Come on, you guys. A hallowed day, John Rhea Ray is saying. A hallowed day. To hallow... I think it's the same as to make holy, so it's not really getting away from it. Um, let's see what you say. Okay, you guys didn't answer the question, so I'll just go on. So, a, a national special day means that the nation, the government, the FedGov, you know, at all, has chosen a day to let everyone who is in their employ and all their citizens not have any federal restrictions on them that everyone who works for the federal government can have that day off and i believe they have to be like ratified and voted for and everything from congress so america does have you know basically generally one or two holidays each month of the year for different and sundry things uh and we have coming up soon is uh, Labor Day, uh, which is, you know, a memorial for laborers, for people who work. It's kind of communist, quite frankly. But the whole, you know, on, on the federal level, people are given that day off. You don't have to go to work. And for a holy day from Yahweh, it, it, it is a very similar thought. You take a rest from your daily work to have a little special time with Yahweh the Father. So in that way, they're very similar. My work doesn't recognize all the holidays that I do, Wessel Forge. Yeah, Wessel Forge, I know the feeling. Mine doesn't either. Uh, I've had some things happen on even the Sabbath, which is just one day a week, that are like, really, can we not do this today? Can I just have one day to kind of rest? Um, and, and that is something about being an Israelite. Yahweh commands you to rest one day. So it's like, oh, sorry, I'm, you know, as far as work work, I don't shoot videos because I consider this kind of a work because I get paid a little pittance for it. But it is for money as well as to just educate and, and socialize and so on. Um, so Juneteenth is not a national holiday. That was kind of my point. I'm getting around about to it. Hey, Liberty. For all may 5th that's my birthday um yeah i'm trying to i'm bringing this circle around by saying juneteenth is not a national holiday and there is uh it's not taught in the history books and so to me it's a cultural holiday like there is a culture a, a set group of people who have adopted this particular day to mean something special to them and as I brought up, like the 4th of July, it's, it's not a new idea to have a, a historical day mean something to people. Um, and so Juneteenth is that. It is a cultural special day. And so if you're in the culture who recognize this day as being special, then um, you already knew about it. You're the ones who are on Twitter who are saying, hey, 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 doesn't he know it's Juneteenth? Blah, blah, blah. Um, now, cultural holiday, right? Seven feet, seven trumpets, food for thought. Well, yeah, seven is, um, I think seven is something like spiritual completeness or something in the Bible. Linda Luda Berg, shalom. Susan Bryant, shalom. Susan Bryant, we are talking about holidays. Um, 
Every day is a holy day under God, David Olufsen. Olufsen. I, I disagree, sort of. I sort of agree to that because if you are living a set-apart life, then each day is set apart. Um, but as far as them being special days to meet with Yahweh, he delineated. He definitely said some particular days, I don't care what's going on, you will meet with me on those days. And I don't know that that is every day. I don't think it is. Um, I think it's a more casual thing on a daily basis versus certain days he definitely delineated out. So Juneteenth, in my opinion, is a cultural holiday, which means it is not a national holiday right now. It has not been recognized as such, but a certain part of our population know what the day is and have decided to make it special and gave it a name, Juneteenth. That is the name of it. Um, I, you know, Labor Day, I mean, the name is, it means something to the people who choose it, but the word Labor Day to some people, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not a very specific, not a very special name for that particular day. So Juneteenth is just, okay, that's what you all decided, fine. Um, now, when your holiday is a cultural day and it's not a national day, you are not guaranteed to have that day off. There are certain cultural holidays that are on the calendar where people don't necessarily get to have those days off. Kids don't necessarily get to stay home from school. People don't get to stay home from work. Well, that gets you into a whole nother deal because you are supposed to have religious freedom in America. And so for you to keep your religious cultural holiday, like Hanukkah, um, there, there's some, there's some pull and tug there because Hanukkah is not a, um, it's not a biblical holiday per se. There is no commandment in the Bible from Yahweh to keep Hanukkah. Uh, Hanukkah is based on a, an event that's mentioned in the Bible where Jesus is at the temple on that particular day. It doesn't say he was doing the festivities that were going on at the time. It says he instructed the people who were there at the time about him because those people didn't think he was Messiah. So what he was, he was doing on that day is instructing people. Um, but the people who were in the temple on that day had decided as a culture and as part of their religion, Judaism, to keep this particular holiday. And they based it on a historical event uh, in their history that had happened, you know, hundreds of years ago when Jewish people, uh, the Maccabees, had um, defeated Antiochus Epiphanes, a Greek guy coming through their area who decimated and, and uh, paganized a bunch of stuff, including their temple, did some abomination inside of it. And so they, they reclaimed their temple and purified it. And that's the basis, that historical happening for Hanukkah as the holiday. And culturally, uh, it has been expanded upon where they, they threw in the story of the lights, the oil in the temple. Yeah. Guineas, really, they weren't doing this earlier. They saw Pastor Joe walk by and they had to raise a fuss. Uh, they, the Jews decided to throw in a story about the oil in the temple lasting seven days instead of just one day and calling it a miracle and so on. But that is not part of the historical date. That's more uh, story added in, more uh, tradition, right? Shalom, no, uh, Sister Kate, perfection, Mark. Caitlin, be Andrew, shalom, everyone. Hit the like button, folks. Okay, spiritual perfection, yes. Um, and so Hanukkah has, it's, it's seven days long, which is very similar to uh, unleavened bread and Sukkot. You know, it's kind of based on the, the actual holy days of God. It's similar, but it's not one that he said, you will keep this holiday. It is a cultural, religious holiday that the Jews decided to keep, and it is part of their identity. If you're going to be a Jew, you will have to keep Hanukkah because that's part of what they base being a Jew on. 
which is not necessarily being a, an Israelite based on the Bible. There's It's parallel things, but they're a little bit different. So that's a cultural holiday also that you may or may not get off. Uh, of work and of school for it depends on you know the laws in your state but people could make the case they could go to court and try to sue their local government and say hey you're you're squashing my religious freedom if you don't let me keep Hanukkah and they also the Jews have pushed for Rosh Hashanah which is a new year for them they call it I think it's the civil new year or something it's not the actual biblical new year which is in the spring Rosh Hashanah is in the fall um, but they have pushed for that. So it's on calendars. Um, and in some places, kids get off school for Rosh Hashanah. So then that brings us to Cinco de Mayo. Cinco de Mayo is based on a historical event. Uh, it is not necessarily the Day of the Dead, but that's another cultural thing that is kind of rolled into that date. Uh, the guineas, they don't like this history. Bad students. Hey! Hold it up! What else wrong with you? Um, Cinco de Mayo is based on a battle where Mexico defeated France. Why is France in Mexico? I don't know. I don't know that much about France's history, but they were in Mexico in 1862, and the Mexican army defeated the French. That is what Cinco de Mayo... So here we have another historical date, right? Thumbs up. Uh, Jacob, laugh out loud. And there's Mrs. West S. Hopefully we're going to see you, Mrs. West S. Um, but so Cinco de Mayo is another historical date. And it's a cultural date because it's in Mexico. Mexicans know what Cinco de Mayo is because it happened in their country, right? So when they move to our country, they are continuing to hold Cinco de Mayo, those of them who wish to, and it's a cultural holiday. If you're Mexican and, you know, open up to Hispanic and anybody else, obviously. But if you're Mexican, Cinco de Mayo has a historical significance for you, just like Fourth of July has a historical significance for an American. So there are Cinco de Mayo celebrations, but it is not a national American holiday. You are not guaranteed to get Cinco de Mayo off in America. Congress has to pass a law that says we're making it one of our national holidays, which I don't think there's a move to do that right now, and I don't think it would pass here because I've, it doesn't have any historical significance to our country, okay? You will be blessed when the Jewish feasts are observed, especially Passover, Pentecost, and Tabernacles. Uh, I agree, David, but they're not Jewish feasts. They're Jewish feasts also. They are Israel, Israelite feasts. They are the feasts that Yahweh gave to his people. So they are actually his holy days. And the Jews also keep them because they were of his bloodline. Well, and, and some of them probably still are. It's very hard to trace those things back. But the, I'm not Jewish. I keep those feasts because I choose to. Because the Father says to. And for you to be a follower of him, you have to believe he is who he says he is, and also that his son was his Messiah sent from him. So it's your belief that really brings you into that family anymore. Hello, Sister Kate. Hang on. Velma Fitzgerald. And none you biz. Shalom. Finally. Yay. You, you got to... I was kind of hoping you'd finally be able to show up, none you biz, that you might get a notice or something, especially if I did it in the middle of the day. I hope you're doing well, and all your little ones, right? Six? Six little ones? Haven't heard from you in a long time. Do you have a garden? Anyway, so the reason I put Juneteenth, Hanukkah, and Cinco de Mayo together as the reason for the talk is because they're all cultural, relating to a per person, you know, personages, uh, holidays, not national holidays in America. We have our, our, you know, you know what they are, like Memorial Day and Labor Day, Fourth of July and President's Day and la la la. Most of ours are relating to historical events. Juneteenth is a horse, is a historical event for Americans, especially Texans, and then anyone who has, you know, an interest in the slavery and how it ran 
if you know what I mean, when it started, when it ended in America. Um, and Cinco de Mayo is a historical date for Mexicans, where they defeated the French. And Hanukkah is an, an historical event in the Jewish faith, um, also Israelite, where the Maccabees defeated the Greeks and rededicated the temple, which had been profaned. So they're very similar. Um, and my whole point in talking about them all and how the similarities are and describing them and everything else is because they are holidays, special days, not necessarily holy days, the way God uh, describes them, but they are special days that are not a requirement for everyone in the world to celebrate. Okay? Uh, Muslims don't give a fig for any of those days. And we don't give a fig for Ramadan and Adele featuring in their holidays because we're not of that culture. We're not a citizen of their country. We do not have a history, a family history, um, in other holidays that are being kept around the world. And so you're not evil and wicked and, and whatever if you don't know about all of them or you also do not keep all of them. Um, because as Brother Chris said last night on his live stream, if you're Israel, Israelites, if you believe Yahweh and you're following his way, none of the holidays that are held outside of his holy days mean a fig to any of us. We don't have to keep them. Some people think you're actually being pagan if you keep them. And I, I do disagree with that a bit. Because a day like the 4th of July is not worshiping another god. It's celebrating a historical event. And I think there's a difference there. I think if you're an Israelite and you did anything that supported, that was the worship was described as um, supporting some kind of pagan god or pagan um, uh traditions, then I think that would be crossing the line with Yahweh because his biggest beef with everybody in the Bible is when they wander off after other gods, when they worship statues made of wood or stone um, or, or metal or gold, uh, where they think of any other object in the universe as a god. So if I went out here and worshiped the flowers in my garden, that's pagan. But if I just look at a flower and say, well, that's pretty, God's creation, I like that thing, I don't think that's pagan. That's me. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to throw that out there, that these, these cultural holidays are important to the, the people who have ties to them, like Cinco de Mayo. I would not expect, unless they wanted to, like say a Brazilian to want to celebrate Cinco de Mayo. If they don't care about what happened in Mexico's history, then I would not think there was anything wrong with the Brazilian saying, I don't, I don't keep that. Just like I wouldn't think a guy in Norway would keep Cinco de Mayo. You know, it, it's not his country's holiday, but I don't think there's anything wrong if the guy in Norway says, hey, I think it's cool that Mexico defeated France and I'm going to, excuse me, have my little Cinco de Mayo celebration. I just don't think it's a required thing for the guy in Norway to do it. Where in Mexico, it may even be a national holiday. Excuse me, I don't know that it is, but as a country, I mean, we have our our holidays best uh, based on historical events, and so Mexico may have Cinco de Mayo. Cinco de Mayo is a national holiday. So a Mexican who winds up being on an oil rig out in the middle of the Indonesian Ocean may decide he wants to hold it because it's important to him. But to me, an Israelite, the most important holidays are the actual holy days, are the days that Yahweh said, you keep these. You appointed times, that's what they're called. Okay. Do not add or subtract. Exactly, we tree. I mean, Yahweh's very clear on, on the days he holds as appointed times. All right, well, never mind. Is it possible for there to be a new holy day? Like, I have a miracle happen, and I celebrate it every year in remembrance of that. Is that a holy day or a holiday? That would be a holy day, not a holy day. The holy days, in my opinion, 
are the days that Yahweh said, these are my appointed times. You will do these things to meet with me. It could be a cultural special day for your family. It could be a cultural special day for you. I mean, there are people who think it's a special day when they got engaged or when they had the birth of their first child or, you know, I don't know, made a million dollars. I mean, lots of people have personal days that are special to them. But they're not holy days. They're not set apart unto Yahweh. Okay. Where is Nanya Biz's comment? Oh. What did she say? Thanks for joining us today. Can you hit the like button and share? Hello, Sasquatch. Oh, and Adnir, you're here too. Hey, Shalom. In Washington, in Tim's group. None you biz. To the rest of you know, I'm an old woman. My son has grown and has two homesteads in Alaska. Okay, none you biz. And I have a, a, a different in my mind. There's other people who comment and I've confused you guys. I'm an old woman. I'm an old woman too. Hey, there's, all right. Velma Fitzgerald. Hello, Sister Kate. All right. Um, let me come back up then. Okay. So what do you guys think? Had you ever heard of Juneteenth until I just said it? Or did you see it on news? And what do you guys think about everything I said? Make sure you are in a live chat. Okay, so how do I do that, Wee Tree? It says live up in the corner in, in little red. Is that what I'm supposed to be doing? No comment. Wait a minute. When you biz, no comment. Okay. I've heard of it, but not familiar with it. Susan Bryant. Did you get to hear my explanation of it? The music well just got the notice. Well, I've said my piece for the last... However long this 32 minutes um, years ago, heard of it? Okay, then I am there. All right, good. I'm very familiar with Juneteenth, S. Mincy 93. So, S. Mincy, do you mind sharing with us what you know about it? I haven't heard of it until this week. Me too. Saw it in Google Calendar and wondered what it was. Gotta love YouTube. Okay, yes, ma'am, I do. Yes, ma'am, I did. Okay. Yeah, Mincy, can you tell us what you know about it? I did my research. I Googled it, and I found it as the, the um, date in Texas when slavery was abolished, which made, I guess, the last state in the United States to, to pass it as a, a law. Yeah, I, I figured that out in any biz. <laughs> I mean, I think there's something, there's, I think that's a significant date when, you know, the last state passes the, the abolishing slavery law. I mean, we have a local celebrations for Juneteenth as well as Cinco de Mayo. So there you go, Mrs. West, because Mrs. West, if you don't mind me saying it, um, is from Texas. So maybe it's a bigger holiday in Texas because they're the ones who passed that, that, uh, slavery abolishment than it is in other states like say Connecticut my husband and I celebrate a few holidays always save holy days as separate to observe there you go right I mean and I feel like I have to go but we'll view this again this evening Shalom okay Mark um, uh, I think holidays that are not religiously based like the 4th of July it's just a day like if you want to have a barbecue and and shoot off some fireworks more power to you um i think you're gonna make yahweh angry if you do something that's straight up pagan and pagan is a false god if you are doing something that worships a false god supports it um is required by it um 
like, I don't know, sacrificing your rooster and putting the blood and, you know, the Santeria stuff. If you do something like that, I think you're being pagan. If you're doing something um, for Zeus or Apollo or anybody like that, I think you're being pagan. If you're just having a barbecue because it's, you know, whatever, Memorial Day, I don't necessarily think that's pagan. I know it's not required for an Israelite. Um, basically, the same thing that you said during the live. We just go over little no black figures that help the cause, but my family and I are black, so that probably is why I heard about it. Exactly, and I don't have a problem with that. Um, I, I, I call it like a cultural special day. Um, and it's historical. It's a historical date also. Um, and like when I was in a foreign country, it was a Muslim country and it was Asian. So I am just like, one, I stick out like a sore thumb. I'm taller than most people who are there, men and women. I'm, you know, super pale compared to the rest of them. And they are Muslim. So they, you know, not only is their religion in their country, um, non-Christian, it is illegal for a Christian to talk to any of their citizens about Christianity in this country where I was. So, you know, I, I am now a tiny little minority person in a, 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 you know, in a whole country and I stick out. There is no way I can hide myself in the local populace. And I was very aware of my culture because I was in a situation where I'm interacting with people from a lot of different countries. Um, there were people from uh, Fiji there and Australia and New Zealand and England and Thailand and the Philippines and so on. And so in that kind of situation, we all are very aware of our own culture, like the American culture. Now, I didn't run around wearing a red, white, and blue flag on or anything like that. And, and I wasn't from Texas, so I wasn't trying to look like a cowboy. I didn't have a, you know, a cowboy hat. Um, but I kind of stuck with wearing my, the clothes I was used to wearing and listening to the music I was used to listening to and cooking the food that I was used to cooking. And um, that's when I was like, okay, I'm now this, there's a culture there. They call it expat too. You know, there were more Brits and Australians and Kiwis than there were Americans in this particular country. And so amongst this minority of people, their culture was, you know, more prevalent. Um, they had their Waitangi days and their, uh, um, oh, what is that uh, British one? Uh, where they try to blow up the Houses of Parliament. It's in the movie V. You know, they celebrated days like that and there would be little decorations up in the street and around their houses and all that stuff. So, I, I see Juneteenth as being that sort of thing. I mean, it is also historical and it's also cultural that there are significant events and people that are linked with that particular day. And Miss West S., who is from Texas, said there are local celebrations for Juneteenth in her area as well. So I would think if you're a, from Texas, you would be a little more familiar with it as a holiday than if you weren't. But, I mean, in general, you know, go for it. Only 100 years ago, a white mob destroyed an American neighborhood called, an African-American neighborhood called Black Wall Street. Hang on. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, Wee Tree, I deleted your thing. Please repost it. I didn't do that on purpose. I was just trying to read it. Known as 1921, Tulsa Race Massacre has been largely left out of U.S. history books. Yeah, I've seen that also. And I, I did check out that date, and that was a pretty horrible a day in American history, and it's not something that was widely taught, I agree, and then there was also a massacre in a town south and west, south and east of where I live, where a mob killed a significant number of um, African American people too, and I can't remember if it was like a hundred, but it was sort of uncalled for, it was kind of a panic thing, and there was no justification, and um, I don't even remember what that day is called, but locally there, the people know about that situation. And I, I wouldn't say they celebrate it, but they're aware of it. And so to me, that's that's like a cultural special day. And uh, again, I don't, 
I don't have a problem with wanting people wanting to keep their particular cultural days, like Cinco de Mayo and and that the ones that I've talked about. Two Family Homestead. Hello, cowboy hats are practical. Ball caps keep your hair in. Straw cowboy hats keep you cool. Exactly, Lone Star Living. N not sassing them at all. It's just that I didn't wear one because I wasn't a cowboy. The gunpowder plot. Guy folks, Fox. That's right. Uh, white mob destroyed an American neighborhood called Black Wall Street. Morgan estimated 300 people in Tulsa, Oklahoma. There you go. Yeah, and... and um, if I remember correctly, that community was prospering. Like had banks and churches and all sorts of things. So it was really kind of awful. Hey, two family. Haven't seen you in one of Sister Kate's live streams. Hello. Rosewood, 11 mayor said. It might have been Rosewood. It's usually always uncalled for. Right? And, and I mean, there is no hiding in America that there have been injustices done against people you know, of all colors in our country. There's been um, massacres right and left. White folks getting massacred by other white folks. Um, natives being massacred by white folks. Blacks being murdered by white folks. There have been those things in the history of our country. Um, I would think, again, you can hold memorials and stuff like that, but the most important thing in my mind for a person now is what is your future going to look like? What are you doing? What is your life like? Um, what direction are you taking it in? I think is more important than being tied to something that happened two or 300 years ago. Like um, my family is Irish. I don't have definitive proof that they were thrown out of Ireland during the, um, famine but they may have been they hit the shores of america in 1900 and i know there was uh prejudice against irish in in the northeast because pretty much everybody came through ellis island so y'all hit the shores of america up there in new york and the irish were looked upon very badly no irish need apply um there were cartoons depicting the irish as drunken monkeys um subhuman there was a uh, slaughter up in Pennsylvania by a railroad company. I think I did a video on it where they had hired all these uh, Irish laborers for cheap. And then when the Irish laborers protested and tried to get better pay, they were all assassinated. And the, the train company told their families that um, they had all gotten typhus. They died of typhus, but they had killed like a hundred of these railroad workers shot them in the back of the head and the, the reason anything was done is two guys in the area having heard of it nowadays started to um, look for the site of where those bodies may have been buried all those typhus victims and they actually found them on railroad land and dug them up and they had bullet holes in their skulls so I, I could tie myself to that but I, I think for myself, I need to think about, one, I'm an Israelite now. So what is my Israelite culture? What do we stand for? What is a normal for us? What do we want out of our lives? Um, how can we serve Yahweh? How can we honor him? And, and just, you know, what, what's happening now? So um, that's just kind of where I stand. Velma Fitzgerald, me. I have ball caps, but don't wear them. No cowboy hat. Moyne and Raisin, still in Texas. I think it's important to remember the past, but it was the past, and that's where it needs to belong. People are trying to change our history, and they believe that will change the future. Well, and I don't think you should erase your history, no, no matter how ugly. I think we should have all of it on record so that we make sure it doesn't happen again and that we have facts to base our opinions on. Daughter of the Mosa. Mexico itself doesn't even recognize Cinco de Mayo as a countrywide observation. It's predominantly only celebrated in one area, Puebla. Okay. The only thing it will do is remove the mistakes from the past, so they will be repeated worse. Right? You kind of have to have a record of your mistakes just so you don't go back to them, I think. Irish were enslaved before that also. Well, sure they were. And I mean, the Romans enslaved everybody that they took into their um, empire. Everything okay? Yeah, everything's fine, sweetie, thank you. I mean, um, 
It was the Romans tromping around through Germany, Germania, that made the Germans so mad they eventually went down into Rome and sacked Rome. I mean, you know, it's just it's bad. All right. I said, oh, I need to get born and raised. Wait, I want to read. In Texas, looking to get out, though now actually shopping for land in Arkansas and Oklahoma this week. Okay, I don't think they're trying to rewrite history, but only trying to correct the misinformation we've been taught as our history. Yeah, if it's misinformation, it should be corrected. And also, if it's not on record, it should be on record. I, I think the history books just don't teach enough history at all of any kind. World history, uh, American history, local history. Um, my daughter got hired as a teacher and moved into a part of Kansas that had a terrible history. The local people there used to lure um, federal soldiers into the area and then murder them and steal their stuff and their identity. And, and her husband at the time was a history teacher and delved into it with the local historia and they, and they were appalled to find out that they were living in an area where a lot of the families had been murderers just a hundred years before. You know, just flat out murdering and stealing things from people. And so it was kind of like, whoa. You know, I said, you be careful while you're up there. Now, of course, 100 years later, their, their offspring don't know anything about that and don't necessarily carry out the family tradition. But it's still like, I'd never known anything about anything like that. Okay, let's see. Okay. Versin, okay, Versinatorix, last. King to resist Romans in central France. Books are written by the winner. And also, you got to look at it this way. Um, when you're teaching in, in, in a school system and you only have an hour a day to give a lesson, like, there's so much history that you can't teach it all. You just can't. People have to read books and do uh, research and write books and reports and stuff on their own as well because you, you just can't even on the collegiate level and your your class could be three hours long you can only cover so much history in that time period shalom sister kate yankee survival can't wait to see y'all soon same okay um that's why people need to pray over the land to remove blood curses. I agree. And dedicate it, us, uh, dedicate it to Yahweh. Where it counts, please. Okay, so, Mincy23, I, one, I hope I remembered your name correctly, and two, I hope I didn't misrepresent um, the aspects of that holiday that you were talking about. I did not know it was also, Tulsa was linked to the Wall Street Massacre. Um, I knew about the Wall Street Massacre, but I didn't know it happened in Tulsa. So that makes a, a better explanation to me, and not better explanation, but makes more sense to me that people were being upset about the date and place he had chosen to do a rally. There you go. And I think it was smart of him to, to listen to what people were saying and move it, because uh, those two things tied together, that's, that's no good. All right, so. Um, Maurice. Okay. All right. Whew. So do you guys have any other comments, questions um, on this topic or, or anything like it? I am going to have another video coming out. I Excuse me, I just watched the last season of... Um, alone um season six and i wrote down some observations on that i have 10 things that i'm gonna talk about for that little deal and i'm gonna shoot that video today too excuse me oh my goodness I was listening to your last video and saw sister kate was live i live in west texas not much there except heat and dirt we won't Move to a populated area, so looking for a place that gets some rain and has more conservative thinking people. Well, there you go. We've had a lot of rain this year, and then all of a sudden, like, last two weeks, none. 
Are y'all changing anything you're doing as far as prepping as this keeps dragging on? I am trying very, very hard to put up food that's coming off the land. Now, I do it every year, um, but because potentially there could be food shortages for a couple of years, um, I'm trying to make sure I'm putting up at least three years worth of things like the dried greens. I now have what I consider to be three years worth of dried greens put up. Um, I'm also trying to dehydrate uh, weeds and stuff here on the land that are good for my goats to eat for the same reason. Now, we have enough land here to support the four goats I have. I can just rotate them all through it and never need to buy hay or anything else. But that's not really practical because the farthest part of the property is like a mile away. Not a mile. What am I saying? Half a mile away. Three quarters of a mile away. And I don't necessarily feel like walking that in the wintertime. So I'm trying to put up stuff that I can feed them and still have them relatively close to where we're living so I don't have to do a lot of work to, to get them out there. My plans are to make raisins from the grapes, which I've never done. And I pruned especially to try to get more grapes so we could do something like do raisins. Um, but I mean, we've been living here seven years and this house is a lot better situation than the first two and a half years we were here when we were living in that tiny little space. So as far as like day to day living, we're fairly comfortable in the house. Um, the one thing I think I'm falling short on and I, I may look into trying to correct that later is clothing because you know, most Americans, we have lots of clothes. Uh, but if for some reason, you know, something really serious happens, you're not going to be able to get clothing either. I do know how to sew so I can make us clothing, but I don't have a lot of material. So that's something I may look into. I may buy sheets. Um, I may order a bolt of material. I'm not sure how I'm going to do that yet. But I already have a sewing machine, so, you know, I'm not going to have to do the sewing by hand. Oh, 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 will you do a show on dehydrating something like whole meals like you get from Patriot Supply? Please, been meaning to ask you. Okay, um, who is this? Elwood Maurice? I don't think it would be that hard, but I, I have not really done a lot of dehydrating of things like meat. Um, but jerky is dried meat. And jerky, there's a million videos on jerky. All you got to do is type in there jerky, venison jerky, beef jerky, whatever, and you will get videos where people, the main thing about it is you slice it really thin, and then when you dehydrate it, you just make sure it dries out completely. Um, I just posted pretty recently a video on me getting the dried um, vegetables out of the car where I dried them. I just laid them on a tray. I just put, you know, the greens on the tray and put it in my car and they dried and generally that's how you do it you just if you're going to do it in an oven um you put the oven on the low a very low temperature the lowest temperature your oven will set to and then you leave the door of the oven open just a little bit you stick like a some sort of metal like a fork or a spoon in there so the the moisture can get out and then you just let the food sit there for several hours and you you test it by opening it up and feeling it if it'll crumble then it's dry enough if it's still kind of moist it's not dry enough it's a really really simple process and the best thing for you to do is try it um and also online if you because certain foods that are already sort of moist like squash it's they do better if you scald them which is just simply putting them in boiling water for like 30 seconds and then dehydrating them. And again, that's just a quick Google search. So it's probably not going to happen for me doing it, but I'm giving you the tools and the information so you can do it. We tried the Texarkana air for about a year. I wasn't impressed. Yeah, it's still kind of hot and, and uh, oh, it's very rural down in the Texarkana area. And not very populous. Going to dehydrate my herbs the way you showed us. Awesome. What kind of roofing is good, bad for water collection? Okay. Um, a metal roof, I think, is more ideal. We have shingles and Pastor did a, 
a, a you know Google search about chemicals coming off the shingles and stuff like that, and it generally they said you know it'll be fine. The water caught off a shingled roof will be fine. Um, tin panels would be a good roof to come off of. I would think wooden shakes would be a little bit harder because they're more absorbent. But um, I mean we get. I get water collection off our coop roof, and that coop is only 8 by 12. So, as a matter of fact, if you look at my videos on my duck house, which is only 66 inches square, I've got roof panels on there that are that corrugated plastic that I bought at Lowe's, and that collects water. When it rains, I have buckets, trash cans at the base of it, and they fill up, they fill up very quickly. So. Anything that'll catch rain is going to work. I mean, if you're desperate, you can even just put a tarp up. That's one of the problems. This month I skipped food prep and focused on clothes and shoes. Next month, back to food. There you go, Susan. Especially people with kids, because your kids are going to grow. And, and you're going to need shoes for, you know, next month and next year. That people that raise animals don't think about is putting back enough food to keep the animals going. Exactly, what's on Forge. And what kind of animals do you have? Like, I don't have cattle. I don't have land that supports cattle unless I bought a water buffalo. Um, but, you know, the way people who own cattle usually do it in America, they have just enough pasture to feed them from spring, and then in fall they sell them and they get butchered, so they don't have to winter them over. But if you're going to winter cattle over, you need lots of hay. You need big round bales of hay. You need acres of grassland. And, and it's, you know, that's one reason why I do goats, because they can eat weeds and, and, you know, there's stuff in the forest, leaves and stuff they can eat in the middle of winter, acorns and so on. Uh, big fan of the hub city myself. Look up Hamburger Rocks dehydrated hamburger. Doesn't last forever, but need to remove as much fat as possible. Yeah, Hamburger Rocks works. Pastors made that in the... In the past, um, the Hub City has everything aid, including too many people. We just got a Garden Master Dehydrator. Got to put it to good use quickly. Thank you. Did squash already? Thanks. Well, you're welcome. I mean, it, it to me, it couldn't be easier. If I wanted to, right now, right now, I could just walk out there, pick a bunch of peas, stick them on a tray, stick them in my truck. Two days from now, they'd be dry, and I would have dried peas. And I'm probably going to do that anyway. It, 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 you can't, I mean, canning to me now seems labor intensive, and canning is very simple. It's a very simple process. You boil some water, you stick some cans in, you time it for a certain time, and then you take them back out. Um, but even that, to me, compared to dehydrating, is too much work. So it's not that hard, people. You can do it. Shoes unless you are tribal, right? You're alive. I'm going to have to rewind. Great excuse to cool off and take a break. Earl's daughter. Exactly. What have you been doing? Have you been working, Earl's daughter? Yeah, this is the time of day when we kind of just chill out a little bit. We go inside. Um, the house is usually cooler. We, we close the windows about 9 in, 9 in the morning to keep the cool air in. And because it's a little better insulated than it was last year, it holds the cooler air for a longer time. And then right around 3 at the peak of the heat, we open up the northern side and the eastern side because this the porch always provides shade and uh, start blowing the cool air in. So we take siesta. That's the way I heat my lunch at work when the sun is out. I put it in my dashboard. I don't use a microwave. Well, there you go. How do you start? All right. Shrek, how did you start with way of life? Did we grow up this way? Are you talking about the Israelite life? Or are you talking about the off-grid life? I need to know that before I answer the question. Dehydrating takes up less space. It does, and it takes a lot less energy. Okay, it's 20 hundred hours there, so uh, you probably just ate dinner, right? This off-grid life. Okay, how did we start? Pastor and I um, 
have always been interested in outdoor living. And mine probably came from when I was a kid and I lived in the wild hills of Indiana for about four years, just running around barefoot with my friends. And then um, with him, his father was a hunter and always liked the outdoors as well. So we grew up in normal homes, but, you know, going out. Then as we got older, um, we took a camping class in college and then he joined the army. And he joined the army in a part of the army that does a lot of outdoor stuff. So they taught him all kinds of outdoor skills, outdoor living skills. In the meantime, um, I was raising our kids and I liked to go on hikes. I liked to take them out into parks and on walks and to the beach and, and that kind of thing. And then as they got older, we both uh, did the training and became scout leaders. So we learned even more, not so much my husband, because the Army had taught him pretty much everything, but I learned a lot of outdoor skills, how to cook over a fire, how to set up a tent, um, you know, safety things and all that in the scouting. Then, whoo, fast forward, you know, we're in our 40s now, and we had a change in our religion, and we had bought this property. We had bought this property on a whim, like, when we were still in our 20s and we kind of forgot that we even bought it but we bought it because we knew eventually we'd want to live an outdoor kind of life and this was cheap cheap land at the time so when the faith thing happened and we suddenly get the idea that you know maybe living in a community situation would be a good idea we offered up our land as the place to try it so we moved down here with three or four other families and there was nothing here that's just the way it happened. It wasn't, a, it wasn't a conscious decision to say, yep, we're definitely going to leave the modern world. It was just, this is what this is. Um, there wasn't even a well here when everybody came down. That was one of the first things we had to have put in. And there was no road either. We had to have that done, have that, the bulldozed and graveled and all that other thing. And um, for us, my husband and I, it was... Not that big a change to, to be off-grid um, because when we lived in that foreign country in Asia, it was close to being off-grid. There was electricity, um, but it was sketchy. There was no hot water. I had to boil water to wash dishes there, and it was stinking hot. Um, and we couldn't run the air conditioners during the day because the electricity cost too much. So we had just overhead fans in our house, and so... That kind of set us up with the mindset that, okay, we can do this thing. Um, and my husband's also a hunter um, and a fisherman when he wants to be. And I've always enjoyed raising animals. I've always liked animals. My first chickens I ever owned were in that foreign country in the capital city where we lived. And I bought them from a, like, um, quick trip kind of place. Walked in, got like a candy bar and a magazine and said, do I am, which is two chickens. And they got on a scooter, went back to their village, captured two chickens and tied them up in a white bag like you get at Walmart and handed them over to me. And they were about $4 a piece. And those were the first ones I ever had. I made their coop from trash that I gathered from piles that the construction sites had. I mean, there was just no regulation. There was no OSHA there. So... All their extra stuff, they just had these mountains of, of wire and, and boards and, uh, you know, all kinds of construction materials. And I just stopped and grabbed stuff I needed and built a little two chicken coop. So the off-grid life just kind of happened as a happenstance. Our plan was to have a real house down here with electricity and everything else. And it, it just was... A logistical difficulty and we have a lot of belongings and nowhere to put them down here so it all kind of came about in a backwards sort of way but we had all the skills we needed to be able to be comfortable in this life I keep the curtain shut in the back to keep the one room cool thanks just wondering yeah you learn all that you learn uh, when you're out in the, the Sun and living this kind of life, the shade is 15 degrees cooler. And so just by being smart um, and thinking about that, when we planned our house,
We also made sure we had windows on all sides. So when there's a breeze, we can open the windows and the breeze comes in and we can kind of, you know, help control the way the weather works for us. Okay, I've been talking for an hour. I'm going to get offline because I have a real life to get back to, but I'll be happy to answer any questions um, before I go. Give you guys just a few more minutes. Learn by doing. Where did you get your solar panels and did Pastor hook them up? Uh, we bought solar panels. My husband bought them when uh, they were on sale at like Home Depot. Um, and we've also been given some by people. And he's also bought some used from people who have their setup and then are changing it or want to get rid of it or whatever. So we've gotten them in all different places. Basic rule of thumb. If you can get a solar panel for 50 cents to a dollar a watt, then that's a good price. Um, and a lot of people who want to upgrade their systems will sell their smaller system uh, on like Craigslist or on Facebook or whatever. And that's a really good place to get a used um, system. And uh, Pastor hooked up some of them and uh, Brother Tim, our solar brother uh helped with the other he he did the main stuff but pastors also hooked some up thank you for sharing with us well none your biz i'm glad to see you were able to show up i was feeling kind of guilty because you weren't getting the notices thanks for streaming always great to watch thank you sergeant james i appreciate it thank you sister kate thank you linda for all your input where did you get your oh you already asked that uh, Norma's having a drink. Is that time of day? I have a friend who has a freeze dryer and they keep that thing going 24-7. Today I'm weeding in the garden. Well, bless you, Earl's daughter. Oh my Lord, I need to do that and it's too hot. I wouldn't do it in the middle of the day. I'm going to wait till later. Um, what is that thing called again? A freeze dryer? Yeah, freeze drying is very, very convenient. Very convenient. Um, they're expensive. And they take a lot of electricity to run. So I don't have one, but someone who we knew who had one told us, like, it's a pricey thing, and their electric bill went up from, from running it. Okay. Thanks. Shalom. Love your live streams. Thank you, David. Good to see you. Asparagus patch next. I have um, started my own asparagus patch. I've been wanting to do it for years, and I planted three plants, which is not a lot. I understand that. And a little thing down in the orchard. But it's a start, and I, it can grow as big as it wants to grow. I love asparagus. And if I don't want it, I'll dehydrate it and feed it to my critters. Have a great day, folks. Shalom. We Tree, thanks for showing up. I finally was, uh, finally sent her an email to let her know I was doing a live stream in case she was available. Bear told me about you guys. Shrek 9118. Well, that was nice of him. Yeah. Yeah. I think we've known Bear about a year, maybe. I think we met him last summer-ish. It was when he left Texas and was, was moving to Oklahoma. I think he and my husband found each other online first when he was still part of Baron Squid. Um, yeah. Well, welcome to the channel. Feel free to look around, comment, watch videos, etc. Basically, my channel is to kind of give you guys encouragement and and sort of tell you our experiences so that you can learn from them and it may so that it can help you um i'm not a channel where i say i don't think you can do what i do um i'm a channel where i think if you want to do what i'm doing give it a shot and i will tell you you know how we do it in case that can help you maybe possibly do it I know my husband actively tells people, you need to get out. Come out of her, my people. And he's right about that. 
but we're very, very clear in saying you don't necessarily have to do everything we did when you come out. Um, not, it, it, nowhere is it written in the Bible that you have to be off grid. And if you can find a place that has a farm on it and, and it's got a well and a stream and fencing and a barn and all that, psh, that's a whole lot easier than having to do it from scratch. Checking in from working. Mark, I'm about to get offline. What were you doing? What kind of work were you doing? And Miss Wes S., please have your husband text my husband so we can figure out how we can uh, spend a little time with you guys. Earl's daughter was out weeding in the garden. I've already milked my goats and fed my animals, and uh, I've got to wash some dishes. And I would like to do some more supports for more of our grapevines. I have a question. Might be off topic, but I noticed Pastor isn't uploading the weekly sermons anymore, but once a month thing now. Is that going to be a standard moving forward? Um, no. There should be pretty much a weekly sermon now. Um, we've done two. The only thing that would change it is if these outbreaks that are occurring after mo the Memorial Day, if the COVID things get worse, then we may shut down again. But w there should have been one from last week and one from yesterday. And those are the only two we've done so far. Biddy sent Wes's number to me. Okay. All right, Miss Wes. Do you have a Patreon? Who said that? Bobby's Solar Homestead? I do not have a Patreon. Um, I, I don't think... I don't think I have the time to give to a Patreon channel where, you know, if people want to pay me directly, um, that I give them some kind of content that's going to be a value. Um, I have to talk to my husband about that because the other thing is I didn't, for a long time, I didn't have enough subscribers, I thought, to justify having a Patreon channel. Um, you know, if you've only got 1,500 subscribers, how many Patreon supporters are you going to have, I guess, is the way I looked at it. And that's also why I don't monetize my live streams generally. I, I, I'm not really in it for the money. One of the kids in my son's high school got in trouble for wearing a t-shirt with an American flag on it in America because it was Cinco de Mayo and it was deemed inappropriate or disrespectful. Recovering soul, I think you'd have a pretty good argument there. And I would probably go first to the school board. That Cinco de Mayo is not an American national holiday. It's not. It's a Mexican holiday, and someone on here said even in Mexico it's not a national holiday. It's a local. It's a regional holiday, mostly in Puebla. So I think you'd have a pretty good argument there, and I would go local first. Go to the school board and argue it. Oh, sure. I didn't even think about that. Thanks. You should have a Patreon, Sister Kate. You need a Patreon, we treat sponsor says. Maybe... We just want to donate to you. None of none of your biz says. Okay, so if you want to just donate to me, I have a PayPal address, and it's called Shofar Viking. So it's a capital S on the Shofar and a capital V on the Viking, I'm pretty sure. Um, and if you want to donate, you can just go there. I would think if you have a PayPal. That's one way you could donate. I will talk to Pastor about the Patreon idea. I just don't know. I'll have to talk to him. I'll have to pray about it. Mark, did you say what work you were doing? Tiller work. Yes, you did. Oh, you and... You and Earl's daughter, man, I could not be doing tiller work in the middle of the day. It is too hot. I would have to be doing that either early in the morning or in the afternoon. Ugh. Y'all bless you. I'm glad you came inside and get yourself a little cool drink and relax for a little while. Show her Viking. 
we need the email address sister. Okay, so shofarviking is at gmail.com. Yeah, it's shofarviking at gmail. And if, if it shows up, I haven't tried. I haven't tried to send myself money that way. Um, but the picture that I did of the goats, the shepherd with the goats behind him, is the avatar or whatever for the website. So if you see that, that's definitely it. And it may not be a capital V for Viking. It may just be, I know I'm not being very helpful. You guys caught me off guard. I, I, I would pay for Patreon. Susan Bryant, wow. PJ is the only person I support on Patreon. I would do the same for you, Sister Kate. Yeah, Shelfar Viking at Gmail should be my PayPal. Um, if you want to, if you want to donate. All right. Well, I will talk to Pastor about that. Um, I also have someone is editing for me a um, what do you call it? A pamphlet, like a booklet, homesteading hints. Um, and hopefully that'll be out soon and that'll be something I will advertise a little um, and then it'll be probably on Kindle and possibly on my Etsy page. Um, but that's it as far as like I'm not a businesswoman. I don't have a business head so I try not to get into things I'm not very good at. The pressure though you, you have to feel good about it, right? I, I, I mean on one hand I feel like my husband works pretty hard at making sure the content on his Patreon is is of worth. And yet I know people like Jordan Peterson in Canada has no content or or does not do any special content for his Patreon page and people just support him there because they agree with his views on the gender, you know, changing the vocabulary and every thing. And so he doesn't really shoot videos for his Patreon. He just has it and people donate to him. So, I mean, there's, it's a, there's a, you know, there's both sides of the story right there. Pray about it. I didn't know you had an Etsy page. None of you biz. Yeah, I have an Etsy page. It's called Israelite Market. And the only thing selling on it right now are, um, refrigerator magnets that are made from original paintings that I painted from scenes in the Bible. And uh, there's a set that are um, paintings that I did of flowers of Shofar Mountain. And I think that's it, just the flowers and the, the biblical things. And I have every intent, Chasing the Life keeps telling me, yeah, I'm interested, get it done. Um, I'm collaborating with my daughters to do refrigerator magnets with the Hebrew alphabet with you know little paintings hand painted paintings for the the paleo Hebrew alphabet so that's in the works but yeah it's called Israelite market watered up back to work I'll watch the replay tonight okay Mark be careful keep your hat on don't get too hot rest when you need to it's good to see you brother all right y'all I'm gonna go I've talked long enough thank you for your suggestions and your comments and everything um, excuse me, and I will have that alone video shot and up on the page soon. All right, bless you guys. It's good to see everybody. Thank you, Wee Tree. Shalom. Shalom.